the whole city series Cigars and citrus sevens, black cement threes, fours The hairs and bread elevens No doubt that I'll be wearing some fire at any sighting With these door and becker fives, you can see me in any lighting It's exciting, I'll be flexing to the coldest degree What's up everybody, it's Sneakerhead M Checks I'm in a much better mood today than I was the last time y'all seen me on here If you didn't already see, I had a bad experience with Go and Alias a few weeks ago And I have an update, so I wanted to share that with y'all But before I start explaining that, the first thing I want to do is thank you all for your support Towards the end of that video, I mentioned that if anybody could try to help get it to the attention of someone at GOAT who could maybe do something about it, or if y'all could just help spread awareness in general, that I'd really appreciate that. And that's exactly what y'all did, and I love y'all for that, for real. So thank you. A week after I put that video out, this past weekend, I got an email from GOAT support. It was a different representative this time, and it was somebody from GOAT this time. The last unhelpful representative was from Alias, emailing me from info at alias.org. And this guy's email was support at goat.com so i know they're the same company but as you can see this is an entire separate email so could it be possible that they're different when it comes to customer service i mean i wouldn't imagine that they're like the same company but they have two different customer service teams but i don't know is it just a coincidence that i just got a bad customer service rep the first time and they happen to be from alias and this time this person that reached out to me was helpful but they just happened to be from go like i don't know if there is a difference in their customer service teams or if that was just a coincidence but anyway he says hi marvin malcolm here thank you for reaching out to me here at goat i'm sorry to hear about the trouble you're experiencing with your GOAT order. At this time, I'll be more than happy to look into this for you. After further review, I'm sorry to hear that you were not satisfied with the findings of our verification team when we inspected your Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG lost and found. As a one-time courtesy, I'll be more than happy to receive these back from you for a secondary review from our senior verification team. I've attached your return label below. Once we receive your return, our senior verification team will reinspect them. Regardless of our findings, we will be moving forward with a one-time courtesy cash out for the entirety of your order for a total of $1,216.75. You should see these earnings immediately available in your account to withdraw or use on your next order with us. We do sincerely apologize for any inconvenience, but appreciate your understanding. Should you have any further questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to follow up with us directly. We'll be more than happy to assist you. Thanks, Malcolm. I was shocked. Because as much as I deserve that payout, I was just a little surprised that a couple of weeks ago, y'all wouldn't help me at all. And then now, all of a sudden, they contacted me, resolved the issue, and everything's good. I'm happy. I'm very happy. I'm thankful. I just didn't really expect it to go down that way. Like, after going back and forth so much with aliases, I'm going to specify now. I ain't even going to say GOAT's customer service, because this is actually aliases customer service. After the experience that I had with aliases customer service, that email that I just got from GOAT almost seemed too good to be true. Like, the other representative wasn't even acknowledging that I sent them pictures, was trying to act like they didn't do nothing wrong, and it was all me. And and this person reaches out to me and they're completely understanding and they send the payout at first i actually thought it may have been somebody trying to fool me like i know how people be creating emails and trying to act like they're a certain company or an employer or something like that to try to swindle people out of their personal information or money or something like that i figured maybe somebody might have saw my video and knew that i was looking for goat to reach out and may have copied and pasted goats uh, customer service email format and kind of filled in the blanks like i know it sounds crazy but people really be doing stuff like that so i tapped on the name up there so i could see the actual email and not just like the display name and it was like i said before support at goat.com so it was a legit email then i went to the goat app to see if the payout was there and there it was it showed up in my goat app showed up in my alias app so i cashed that out right away got my one thousand one hundred eighty one dollars and 47 cents and everything's good now so big thanks to malcolm at goat and once again thank you all those of you who shared and helped that video circulate in any way but i really wonder how that sequence went exactly like how did malcolm catch wind of the video did he come across it himself did somebody else show it to him if so who does that person work at goat are they a friend of malcolm's like i really want to know exactly how the video got its way to that representative for him to fix that for me like i know it could have went down so many different ways and i was just curious but that's something we probably won't ever find out and that's all right i'm just thankful that they were able to make it right but my biggest question and concern now is what happened to the authenticator that caused all of this were they fired suspended at least like did, did anything happen i mean honestly there is no right punishment for that other than them being fired suspension ain't good enough no no other type of disciplinary act is good enough what they did was crazy the only way i could see them justifying not firing this person is if instead of stealing the shoes and swapping them with a pair that they had personally is if that authenticator mixed them up with a fake pair that they had in goat already that's the only other thing that i could think of that could have possibly happened in this situation if that was the case then maybe that's not a situation where they have to fire the person but but at the very least, is Go going to change anything internally to make sure that something like that doesn't happen in the future? That's what I want to know. Because here's the tricky thing. 
In the last video, I said if Goku fixed the situation, I'd go back to buying and selling with them. But if they haven't gotten rid of the person who did it and haven't implemented any type of new rule or procedure to prevent something like that from happening in the future, I'd still be putting myself at risk by using them. Because check this out. Even though Goat fixed the situation and I'm not taking anything away from that, if you look at this email they sent me, so they sent me the first email on Friday the 25th, I responded saying thank you. Then they emailed me back on Tuesday. And if you look at the email, he said, thank you for following up and shipping your sneakers back to us. Now, I know it's not a big deal. Like I said, I'm glad that they fixed it. I'm not trying to make a big deal out of little things like the way they worded something in the email. But keywords here are shipping your sneakers back to us. Those were not my sneakers. <laughs> Those were somebody, I don't know whose sneakers they were. I don't know if they was the authenticated sneakers or somebody else's shoes that they sent in, but those was not mine, like clearly. And like I said, I'm glad that they fixed the situation. I don't necessarily need them to admit what happened because I already know what happened. I'm just not sure if the person purposely stole them or mistakenly mixed them up with another fake pair. But regardless, at the end of the day, I got a pair back that I didn't send in. So for them to call them my pair kind of like annoys me because it's just like a lack of accountability. Like, I'm glad you sent me the money. And that tells me all I need to know. They they wouldn't have sent me the money if they didn't know they were in the wrong. But don't try to low-key tell me that these was my shoes and act like y'all is just doing me a favor by sending me the money. Like, that's kind of how I took that. And, and maybe I'm overreacting. Like I said, I'm still thankful that they sent it. It's not the end of the world, but I did kind of peep that. They said this is a one-time courtesy and thanks for shipping your shoes back. They're still not admitting that they're wrong. I appreciate the money because that's really what I wanted. I just deserve my money. But now y'all saying it like that, y'all y'all still pointing and blame at me. Now I'm kind of nervous. Like, should I should I continue to do business with y'all? Because if something like this happens again, y'all gonna point the blame at me again and and i'm sure since it's a one-time courtesy y'all not gonna hold me down next time if, if one of your authenticators swaps my shoes with some fakes again you know what i mean so now i'm a little concerned after thinking about that a little like should i even really go back to selling with them you know i'm not trying to make a big deal over a couple of words but the way that was worded kind of doesn't make me feel the most secure about sending them my sneakers again especially something expensive something rare so i don't know about selling with them anymore if i do it definitely won't be anything expensive or hyped up that'll encourage any employees to do something like they did with my lost and founds i don't necessarily feel the exact same way about buying from them because at least in the event where i buy something from them i have my bank on my side if i pay with paypal i have them as well so with buying i feel like you have a little bit more protection and and I feel like an employee there, if they're gonna do something like they did to me with the loss of founds, I feel like they're way more likely to do it to a seller rather than a buyer just because of those reasons. But when you sell with them, you don't have any of that. You don't have no bank, you don't have no PayPal. That's really just between you and GOAT or alias. And I got a lot of comments on the last video of people suggesting that going forward, if I'm gonna sell shoes with GOAT, that I should record myself boxing the shoes and shipping, or that I put a particular mark on the shoes in the box before I ship them, or put some type of tracking device on every pair that I sell with them. And even though some of those things will work, here's why I wouldn't really prefer to do any of them. The only reason i ever liked selling on these apps as opposed to somebody directly was for convenience it was a lot more convenient than meeting up with people directly or driving around to buy sell trade stores trying to get cash out so if i find myself recording myself putting the shoes in the box and then recording myself taking that same box to ups and then still recording myself giving that box to the ups person i might as well go back to meeting up with people because now i gotta find somebody to record me doing that because i can't package the shoes and hold the phone or the camera at the same time and then i gotta do that on every pair that i sell that actually may be more trouble than going to meet up with people directly now putting a particular mark on the shoe or on the box doesn't take as much time but the only thing about that is if i'm selling a shoe as brand new and then i send it in and they got a little mark on it they may mark the shoe as defective and reject my sale you know and i don't want to risk the shoes that i'm selling to not pass authentication because of that the tracking device is crazy to me because now i gotta go buy something and make sure i always have them to put on every shoe that i sell but the craziest thing about that is let's just say i do put a tracking device on the shoes as soon as they get them at go all they got to do is just take it off and then i'm out of luck or even worse if they see that there's a tracking device in there they can take it off the pair that i sent in put it on the fake pair and do exactly what they did to me with the loss of founds and now when i try to look at my tracking device it's gonna be on the fake pair so i don't think that's a good solution either so yeah the more i think about it i'll probably hold off for selling with them at least for now if i do it'll probably only be used pairs and nothing expensive now here's the thing about buying when it comes to purchasing sneakers none of us really want to buy from any of these reselling apps we gotta pay extra run all these risks and wait longer so obviously we all prefer to cop straight from the source which in this case is nike or one of their retailers but let's be realistic out of all the sneakers we want, how many of them are we really able to cop for retail? Even if you're lucky, you're not getting every pair that you want for retail. People was in the comments on the last video saying stuff like, oh, this is why I only cop retail. As if it's just that easy to just cop any shoe that you want releasing from the sneakers app or from Foot Locker or any of these other retail spots. It's not. If it was, GOAT and StockX and all these places wouldn't even be around. They wouldn't be in business. If you're not really into sneakers like that, that's different. 
But a lot of us, on certain shoes we really want, we can't just accept taking that L on the sneakers app and seeing them all over the place and everybody with them, knowing that we really wanted them and won't ever get to get them unless they restock or we wait until they re-release, you know, years from now. So we need that plan B. And sometimes we need a plan C. <laughs> so in that case where you don't hit for retail, your only options for getting the shoe at that point is to buy from some type of reseller. Whether you cop from a reseller directly, get them at a store that resells sneakers, or have Gold, StockX, eBay, or an app like that middleman you a pair. So in that event, for a couple of reasons, a lot of us would rather cut that middleman app out and cop from a reseller directly that we trust and know has a plug with a retailer. But maybe they don't have the shoe you're looking for or don't have your size, but chances are GOAT, StockX, or eBay does. If you live anywhere close to a store that resells sneakers, you could try one of those. But the thing is, a lot of these stores can be almost or just as risky as some of these reselling apps. These stores, just like those apps, get sneakers from other people to sell to you. Now, some of them may have a retail plug like the resellers I was just talking about. And if they do for new releases, you're good. But a lot of these stores, even if they have that, still take in numerous pairs from strangers, people they don't know. They're not sure where the shoe came from. So it really comes down to where these stores are getting their inventory from and if whoever takes it in isn't taking any fakes in by mistake. But a lot of these stores buy from anybody and if their staff doesn't know their shit, they could unknowingly be reselling fakes. The good thing about the stores is though, you're right there in person. So you cut out the shipping risk and you can see what you're buying. So if you know what to look for, you can at least see if they're good or not before you buy them. But if you don't, then you're putting all your trust in that store's authenticators. Now let's just say you do have a trustworthy local store you can go to. Like I was just saying, about the individual resellers, sometimes the store may not have the shoe you're looking for in the size you need. But chances are, one of those reselling apps does. You know, these apps are so big, they have an enormous marketplace that enables us to find pretty much any shoe in pretty much any size. So in that case, we're left with pretty much no other option than go eBay or StockX. And even though that would actually be a plan D, for those of y'all who don't know, this Plan D situation comes up pretty often if you're really into sneakers like that. Now, speaking of eBay, a lot of people commented on my last video saying that they prefer to use eBay over Goat and StockX. eBay's cool. The only thing about them that makes me kind of nervous is I don't know if y'all seen them videos of the eBay employees authenticating sneakers at SneakerCon, but man. Those are scary. One that was real crazy to me was with a high top pair of Fragment Travis Scott ones. This is a real hyped up expensive shoe. And you know, the more hype a shoe is, the more money it goes for, chances are the more fakes there are out there. So this is a shoe you really got to thoroughly check if you want to authenticate it. And if you look at the video, I mean, they just looked at the shoe real quick. Now, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. If you look at the video, there's actually, like, you can tell that the video was cut. So they definitely spent a little bit more time authenticating the shoe than that video shows. But just even in the parts that they showed in that little clip, they just barely seemed to look at them. And as good as fakes are nowadays, that's not the way you should be authenticating something. I'm really not trying to make eBay look bad, but just seeing that scares me. So I can't say that I completely trust their authentication process if they got people like that working for them. I'm not trying to bash eBay, but I got a lot of comments about them. And some people even reached out and asked me, like you know what i think about ebay one thing about ebay is i heard their customer service is really good and what really puts them over goat and stock x as far as customer services i heard ebay has a customer service phone number a lot of people has commented on my last video saying like instead of emailing them i'd be on the phone for those of y'all who don't know goat does not have a phone alias does not have a phone you cannot contact them with a call in any way it's only email now i've never had any situations where ebay where i needed to contact customer service so i'm just going off of what other people have said but i've heard from numerous sources that their customer service is good so we are more safe with ebay in that regard but if I'm buying a shoe where I'm more concerned about the authenticity of the shoe, I'd probably buy from GOAT. The thing is, any of these authenticators can make a mistake. Any of these authenticators could do something shady like they did with my lost and found ones. It's a risk we take with using these apps. But all those risks aside, when it comes to authenticating a shoe and getting it right, I'd say I trust GOAT more than eBay and StockX. eBay makes me feel better as far as customer service. And if I do have an issue, I feel like just based on what other people said, I'd be able to get help easier. But as far as just, just simply authenticating a shoe, I just have a little bit more trust in GOAT's employees than eBay's employees. Obviously not regarding, you know, the possibility of them doing what they just did to me with the lost and founds. But if I'm not doubting the authenticity of the shoe, I'd probably cop from eBay. Just because if there's any issue with shipping or the shoe's condition or anything, I know I could hop on the phone and not have to deal with emails and not get my thing resolved until months later. So yeah, it all really depends on the shoe and the situation. And since they fixed this situation, I do still want to work for GOAT. I also got some comments from people mad at me for what the shoe sold for. I only had them at that price because that's what they were going for at the time. And if my price was too high, they wouldn't have sold. But they did. Somebody wanted them enough to pay that price, so they bought them. And they weren't the only person buying them at that price. Look, I'm going to check Alias and StockX. All right, so here we are. Lost and Found Chicago, size 9, same size as I had. Now, we're at November right now. So let's bring let's bring it back to when this shoe sold. I sold these at the end of September. So the weekly average 
for when I sold these was 1,318. Look at the week after, it went up. The next week was 1,373. Let's check StockX. Size nine. All right, let's see. So we back at September. Let's see, it's the end of September. September 26th, so they're a little less on StockX, but this is not including all their fees that they throw on top. But my point is, the shoe was going for that amount around that time. Yeah, I might think that's too much, and that's okay. But to sit here and act like I'm wrong for charging that price or that I was trying to finesse somebody or swindle somebody, like, fuck out of here. First of all, y'all don't even know what I paid for the shoe. Y'all acting like I bought the shoe for 180 and then tried to sell it for that much. That was not the case. I didn't pay retail for the shoe, you know what I mean? But regardless of what I paid for the shoe, for y'all to be mad at me when somebody else bought the shoe is ridiculous. I didn't hold a gun to that seller's head and said, you gotta buy this shoe. I just put them up on the app and they sold. That's how sneakers work. That's how the world works. And if y'all don't know that, like, do yourself a favor and don't be in people's comments out in ignorance. Y'all sounded dumb as hell complaining or saying that I was trying to swindle somebody or that or that I deserve this, that I deserve that situation because of that. Like, go suck a dick. Several. Several dicks. Like, y'all be mad at resellers. Like, buying something with demand and reselling it is a crime. It's literally done with damn near everything you buy everything y'all all eat food right do y'all be mad at the fast food restaurants for reselling food or the grocery store y'all know the grocery store didn't grow and produce every single thing that they're selling in the store they bought it from other people for less and they're selling it to you for more do y'all go up in the grocery store and the fast food restaurants bitching about the price and them being resellers i don't think so i'm not gonna spend any more time going in on that topic because i actually have a separate video where i go in depth on it so if y'all want to see that just tap that little link up there but yeah like stop with that because y'all sound ridiculous anything with demand is gonna get bought and resold that's just that's just how life is y'all don't like it sorry <laughs> but yeah i'm just glad somebody at go was able to help me resolve this and i didn't have to take any legal action or contact better business bureau or anything like that if this video was helpful or informal in any way i really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up if you're interested in other sneaker related content more specifically early sneaker reviews do us both a favor and subscribe to my channel i try to get almost every pair of jordans coming out early legit pairs early no fakes and i give close-up footage on feet footage and i give resale predictions reselling predictions all that stuff so if that's something you're into if you ever want to see any close-up footage of a shoe before it comes out definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel and also tap that little bell icon next to the subscribe button and select all. That way when I put a new video out, you'll get notified that you won't miss out on anything. Thank you all for watching. Everybody, please stay safe and healthy out there. And I'll see you next time.